Move up in the pocket. He's gonna roll out right, he's gonna motion, he's gonna go to the end zone. It's gonna be caught. They're gonna say, touchdown! Oh my goodness, Connor Lane! It's a rainy day FCAC football showdown this afternoon on the DAF Media Network. Today, two four and one squads face off as the Darien Blue Wave hosts the Fairfield Ludlow Falcons and what should be an exciting one. Hello everyone, I'm Owen Heffron, joined alongside Lucas Balanzano. Lucas, both these teams stacked with great players. Let's go through our players to watch for this game. Uh, for the Falcons, it's a pretty easy choice. I'm gonna go with offensive powerhouse and defensive back Justin Toothacre. Uh, we're going to have the highlights up. Uh, last week against Ridgefield, he scored the first three touchdowns of the game and uh, turned out the fumble recovery to help prepare Lumbo to win. Out of those three touchdowns, he caught one in the air and ran for two more on the ground. And uh, you see the highlights here. There's a deep bomb, touchdown, catch by Toothaker. He's finished the game with two of the six of the all-time stars. He's going to shades of Fred and Bell. can pop a big play at any moment, so the Blue Wave defense has to be uh, careful. So, Toothaker, truly a guy that can do it all. We saw he catch passes, takes handoffs, and he even returns kicks, Lucas, but let's switch over to the Darien Blue Wave and the home team. Ben Rolap is our player to watch for this one. What can you tell us about this quarter? Uh, well, this is a huge game for the first round of and so far this season, we've seen a split set on the center of the deck uh, but obviously, last week in the Sunday, uh, Sunday after with a broken collarbone. Good performance from a sophomore today. Big crowd here at the Darien High School. It is, of course, the homecoming football game. So we'll see if Ben Rolap can lead his team to victory and send the fans home happy. You're watching Fairfield Ludlow Falcons at the Darien Blue Wave on the DAF Media Network. National anthem and kickoff coming up next.
So Darianne wins the coin toss. They have elected to defer. It'll be Anson Sakura kicking away for the blue wave. And we're going to get this started here at the Darianne High School Stadium Field. Boot from Sakura. It's a good kick. It's going to go to the end zone. Touchback. Ludlow offense taking the field. They, of course, are led by their quarterback, Christopher Bellatoni, who this season has been tearing it up. We see the stats now, 10 passing touchdowns, almost 1,000 passing yards, just 91 away. Could achieve it in this game. Lucas, 72% completion percentage as well, so definitely a star in this Ludlow lineup. It's a high percentage. You're gonna see a lot of short passes from him, just dink and dunk their way down the field, but we're gonna look for the Darian defense to try and stop that. Well, Tony looks to throw on the first one. He's going to find a man near sideline. And just right there, one of those short passes. You're going to see a lot more of those. Hit, hit Gerald Jacobs there. Quick hitter. Again, you're watching us on the DAF Media Network here at the Darien High School Stadium Field. It's 
Darian hosting Ludlow. We see Darian on the left side of the screen on defense, and they're all black uniforms, and Ludlow on the right side, and the exact opposite, all white. Beltoni joined by Kleinbeck in the backfield. Motion man across, another pass. Not looking at all, it was John Kleinbeck and goes out, so it's to be third down now. Third down. So a quick first pass, stopped by the blue wave quickly, and then an incompletion leads to a third and three. Darian would love a three and out here to start the game. Bellatoni rolls out right, floats one wide open receiver, going down the sideline, legs taken out. I believe it appears to be number 11, John Kleinbeck, the captain. Yeah, that motion, man, seemed to cause a lot of confusion on the Darien defense. And on a broken play, uh, Bellantoni just rolls out and finds the open man. Excuse me, I, be I actually do think that was Ramsey Atta. Also plays free safety on that reception. So a third and three moves the chains a ton. So great field position now for the Falcons. From the gun again is Christopher Bellatoni. Looks to pass again. Wide open again is John Kleinbeck. Just like that, the Falcons are on the board. Less than two minutes into the game, they score a touchdown. Wow. And that is a blown coverage on the Darien defense. Completely wide open, uncovered. Not a man near him. Got the safety covering that deep middle zone, which leaves that sideline completely wide open. I don't know if there's supposed to be someone on there in, the, in that back deep deep third, but just wide open. So Otta catches one on the far sideline, and then, uh, excuse me, Kleinbeck gets one, and Sam Graziano now looks to be a fake extra point, but they'll say. It's flag you know, on the yeah, dairy end. Offsides on the defensive side. So Sam Graziano, or not Sam Graziano, excuse me, there's going to be another, another flag. flag. False start. A false start. It was a direct snap to what looked like number eight, Ryan Tompkins, who leads the team in touchdowns. So it looks and like they're going to yeah, bring, bring back mm -hmm. the field goal unit. Yeah, now they'll bring him back. So a little bit of confusion on a play that usually isn't so confusing, an extra point attempt. But now it's Sam Graziano again. Extra point attempt. Up and through. So 7-0 early. Yeah, that one's really going to set the momentum for this game, Owen. And just in a few short plays right there, within just a minute and a half, uh, Ludlow already on the board with a touchdown. We'll take another look at that one. Dumps it right in the bucket for John Kleinbeck. Leads that team in receiving yards per game. Darian will get the football back, looking to respond. Graziano will kick it away. No Ryan Gerlamo on the return unit for Darian as he did break his collarbone last week versus Greenwich, an extremely unfortunate injury as the captain goes down. Yeah, it's going to be a big blow to this Darian defense. And the effects are already being felt early, as you can see here. Yeah. Seven points in one and a half minutes. Graziano going to kick it away. Looks like Harry and John Rooney, the twins, are back there. Left-footed squib kick. Dribbles down, going to be corralled. Rooney looking to break to the outside. He does. Burst to speed. Rooney eventually met and tackled down past the 45-yard line of Fairfield Ludlow. And this, this squib kick backfires on them as he takes it 
all the way down to the uh, Ludlow 45 yard line. Yeah, Harry Rooney, a great return, and that's gonna spark some life onto that Darien sideline. So now the blue wave offense gets set, and jogs out onto the field. Here's Jack Silsby is out there. Usually a defensive lineman. Looks like Charlie Tom is gonna take this. It's gonna be a keeper and he drops the football. They're gonna say it's gonna go to the Falcons. That is an interesting call putting Tom at quarterback. Not sure. So they, what happened there? What was the decision to influence that? As you have roll lap, of course. Some first play trickery backfires for the blue wave as they had Jack Silsby, a captain defensive lineman on the field. Charlie Tom, a tight end, just took the snap and fumbles. And just like that, it's Ludlow ball again, 17 seconds after they just had it. Bellatoni from the gun, rifles one. Another quick pass, Lucas, just like you were talking about, hits Gerald Jacobs on the near side. It is a similar play we saw in the first drive. Just dinking and dunking, taking what the defense gives them, and you'll take a five-yard gain like that any day. And just now, we hit two minutes gone in the first. Ludlow already up 7-0. Beltoni checking his play sheet. Man in motion, Ramziata is gonna just throw that one behind John Kleinbeck. Got a hand on it, couldn't quite pull it down. Look yeah, at that one again. Pass a little behind there, but looks like number number 54, Johnny Faye was all over that. He was gonna get there either way. And the pass was behind the line of scrimmage, a little bit behind. So Lolo threatening early, right around midfield now. Four out wide. Bellatoni throws again, floats one up, and no one's there. In the direction of number six, Gerald Jacobs. There's just no one there at all. Some good coverage. I believe Morgan Rupenstein was on that near side. Fourth and six. Punt unit is not on the field. Bellatoni looking to, the, looking to his sideline. There looks to be a lot of confusion here. Yeah, they'll go for it. Kleinbeck lined up to his left. Takes it, Bellatoni, quick pressure. Hits Jacobs, breaks one tackle but cannot get past. Number six, Briggs McGuckin. That is great rallying by the Darien defense right there. One man gets there, then another one, and he just becomes swarmed. And he has nowhere to go. Briggs McGuckin, great on the defense this year. Has a couple picks, has a pick six on the season. Great stop there. So now the blue wave, hopefully, Get some points on the board now. Ben Rolap, their true quarterback, is now in the game. As we see his stats on the year, he's got a touchdown over 300 yards, 53% completion percentage to three picks. So some play action now. Throws across to Kevin Roche, can't get it in. Oh, but a flag on the play. Will be a flag down. We'll see what it's called for. They're gonna say pass interference on the defense. It looks like he was being pushed as the ball was in the air, Kevin Roach. And looks like that was the reason he was unable to come down in it, come down with it. Let's look at it again. Being held, maybe. His left arm hit there as he's trying to reach up, prevents him from reaching up to the ball. Yeah, on the arms that looked like Ryan Menzoni, or Ryan Menozzi, excuse me, was on coverage there. Hard to cover Kevin Roach, big guy, 6'8. Yeah, I'm going to want to see Kevin Roach use that physicality to get some jump balls in this game for sure. Hand off to Luke Caesar. 
And John Kleinbeck, who scored the touchdown, was able to make that tackle. John Kleinbeck leads the team in receiving yards and rushing yards, but still make plays defensively. It's so useful when you can have a guy like that. It's definitely the reason why he's captain. Oh yeah, for sure. Having a guy, a utility guy like that is so important. Rollap rolls to his left. Trying to find space. Looked one deep, man open, it's caught! He's got him. Touchdown, Will Bonner! Darian gets on the board. See, Rollap rolling to his weak side, has to flip his hips and throw with his right. On the broken play, Will Bonner just grabs a great job by Will Bonner. See Rollap rolling out and and just find the open space in the defense. And it happened to be in the end zone, and that'll be Darien for six. We talked about his ability to roll out and uh, his ability to throw on the run, excuse me, is now Ansa Sakura on this extra point, perfect on the year for extra points. It's up and good. So tie game, 8.52 left to play in this first frame. Yeah, we look at it again. That's, that is not an easy throw to make at all, Owen. Rolling to your left as a right, righty quarterback. I'm gonna flip those hits. It's an awkward arm angle, but he makes it work and finds Bonner in the end zone for six. So a good game already between these two blue colored squads. As special teams unit will come on for Darianne, getting a talking to their coach before they head out. Great job of Rollap finding Bonner for that response. Special teams unit jogs out. Ludlow looking to regain this lead. Now that, that's a big response by the Darien offense right there, Owen. Uh, you find yourself down by seven this early in the game. It's, it's gonna be a struggle, but as you can see there, Rollap is able to work through the controversy in this offense, and they and they drive the ball downfield and get a big play for six. Yeah, less than two minutes before Ludlow first, uh, first scored <clears throat> their touchdown, and Darian stayed calm, and they, oh, is this gonna be, looks like fair catch maybe called in the end zone. Ludlow will have a good field position to start. That's what it looks like. Yeah, so momentum early in Ludlow's favor, and then now Darien responding, shifting back to the Darien side as this crowd erupted when they scored that touchdown on. Darien trying to get a stop like they did last time. Great tackle by Briggs McGuck on fourth down. They'll hand this one off to Kleinbeck. Goes to the pile. Nothing, nothing brewing at all. Right in there, bunch of blue wave defenders in on the tackle. Gain a two second and eight now. As we see some of the people on the Darien blue wave defensive line. Ryan Gately, of course, was there. Will Barber. A low offense checking those play sheets. Pelotoni takes it. Another lob pass, and it's going to be just beneath the outstretched arms. They're going to say, "Did it pick that?" They're going to say, it "Looks like the Did it ball get... didn't hit the ground, and then it just popped out of his arms." It was tipped up into the air and intercepted. We'll get another look at it right now. Maybe it was in his hands and just popped out at the last moment. But a great job by number 22, Morgan Rupenstein. Great awareness and grabs it. That is great. Ludlow had trips right on that. So they're trying to go back to the weak side. He actually had him, and that just looked like a very, very unfortunate play for Ludlow as it just pops right into the arms of Morgan Rupenstein. Looks like first interception of the year for Morgan Rupenstein. Great play on the Darien defensive side, taking advantage of a not so accurate pass by quarterback Christopher Bellatoni. There's now a pitch left to Caesar. Gain of some gain of about five yards. It's a solid run there for first down, Owen. The thing I don't want to see Darian do is be putting a rollout in these situations where it's third and long. He's got to be forced to make these big long throws that could result in turnovers. 
So just picking up five yards on first down is, is always gonna be a good situation that you can get those third and manageables. Second and five for the blue wave. Another give to Caesar. Gets maybe a few before being wrestled down. So third down now. I said, Lucas, you didn't want to see him in any uncomfortable third downs, but third and short is, of course, manageable for the sophomore quarterback. Joined by Caesar in the backfield. Play action, flag down. It's going to be tipped up and intercepted. Let's check on the flag. They're going to say it's an interception going the way of the Falcons. So tipped at the line of scrimmage. Just like that, Lolo gets the ball back. Two, back and forth. So many turnovers. We saw a turnover on downs. We saw an interception. Two interceptions, excuse me, one on each side. And a fumble on the first play of the game for the Blue Wave offense. And that one's going to be interesting to see how Rollout bounces back from that one. Not necessarily his fault here. That's a great play by the defender. Uh, again, a hand on it. So it's going to be interesting to see how he bounces back. Can't let a play like that get to your head. Smothered behind the line of scrimmage. Blue Wave gets to climb back. Will Barber appears to be in there on the tackle. His brother Jack is a former football captain and basketball player here at the high school. And now he plays football for Williams. So second and 11 after going backwards. Checking their play sheets a lot is this Falcons offense. There you go, trips left here. Maybe attack the weak side like they were trying to do on the Morgan Room side interception, but they'll go. It's gonna be it's gonna be intercepted again. Walker Brown takes it to the right and he fumbles. And now it's recovered. Who are they gonna say? I thought he was down on. I don't know if he fumbled out. Stays with we'll, Darian. We'll get a look on the replay, but yeah, it's gonna stay with Darian. Right out of the hands of number five, Ramsey Ada. First interception of the year for Walker Brown. Yeah, Walker Brown, right place at the right time. And that's another bobble by, a, by an offensive player leading to an interception. It's her third pick of the game already. And we're only halfway through the first quarter. The amount of turnovers is absurd. We're not even halfway through. The first frame in this one, Lucas, is it, it's not even raining yet here in Darien. Is, yeah, no is it rain. slippery? I don't, I don't yeah, know what's going on. It's a little damp from before, but a lot of bobbled passes here. Rollap, laundry on the field, looks down the left side, no one's there. In the direction of Kevin Roche, we'll see what the flag is about. Official making the call. Penalty on Darien. It looks like it was that motion man at the start. I think it was Will Bonner in motion who they called the flag on. But that, that's a that's a good play right there. You got Kevin Roach who's who's as we know so tall and and just, just giving him a shot one on one. Usually that, that uh, will not go wrong. Looked like he beat the defender a little bit. Just a slight overthrow, but can't get too mad at that. Give to Caesar, big hole. Breaks a tackle, runs into a few more Falcons defenders before eventually being taken down. This run game has looked pretty solid for Darian so far. Oh, he's picking up at least at least five yards. That's a almost a 10-yard run right there. You got one-on-one -on -one to the left. Another one to Caesar and this time he goes absolutely nowhere. Caesar getting those tailback reps. Now we're going to do a third and medium here. No captain, Clifton Shelton, so we'll see how the Darien offense and Andy Grant plays this one. Another gift to Caesar, open hole, trucks oh, a man. Gets down within the 10 yard line of Ludlow. 
That is a big physical run by Caesar right there. Just laying him out. Boom. And on third and third and six, you call a run play. Not mo not many coaches would do that, but it ends up working out as Caesar gives them the first first down. Gutsy play call puts them even closer to cashing in. First and goal here. A pitch to who else but Caesar spins out of a tackle, breaks one more. Three men had to stop him on that one. Darian getting closer and closer to Paydirt. I mean, Caesar's just playing so physical right now. Eating up those tackles, breaking tackles. And he is single-handedly driving this Darian offense down the field right now. Caesar also a lacrosse player in the spring, and his brother Joe, also a football player here at for Darian. As we'll see, Darian on the far right hash mark, motion man, appears to be the man who received the touchdown, Bonner the near side. Another give to Caesar. Stumbles down and is caught just short of the goal line. They'll mark it at the one. Yeah, right there on like that half yard line. Caesar once again getting big and physical. He almost gets in. But I expect them just to give it right back to him here. Just tripped up. Looks like Connor Lane. Don't overthink it. And Roche oh. on the it's going to be a direct snap for a for a touchdown. touchdown like, can't quite see who got the. It looks like Charlie, Charlie Tom, Tom took the direct snap. They motion him in from that tight end spot, get him right under center, and they just get a quick snap into him. And he just uses that big frame and just pot drives in for the touchdown. Great play from the Darian Blue Wave offense. Most people, I would assume, expected the play to go to Caesar again. I mean. Why not? It's been working the whole drive, and they give it to Charlie Tom, who definitely redeemed himself after fumbling on the opening drive, as now Caesar's going to hold the kick. Yeah, like you said, that's a great response by Tom after obviously fumbling on that first Darien play, but great response by him to get in the end zone. Great trust the coaches have in that big in that big guy, and 14-7 now for the Blue Wave. Just under three and a half minutes to play in this first frame. So a lot of turnovers, a lot of sloppy plays on offense, but that drive, I mean, star of the drive, Luke Caesar, looked great for oh, yeah. Darian. He was very physical, just pounding these, these Ludlow defenders and just driving Darian downfield. It was a great drive by him, and uh, expect to see a lot more running from him throughout the rest of this game. Sakura now, after his extra point, is going to kick it away. Had two very long kicks on his two kickoffs so far. But want to start the game in the one after the first Bonner touchdown. So we'll see if he's... And ball falls off the tee. It's a little, little breezy here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the wind is supposed to pick up as we go throughout the rest of this game. But it uh, doesn't seem to be any rain in the forecast. Another Saturday with not so bright weather. So hopefully the ball stay on the tee as the core goes. Kicks it away. Another great kick into the end zone. Yeah, Sakura having some great kickoffs here. Another touchback. Huge leg on Sakura taking over the kicking duties for Darianne after Tucker Stevens have went to New Canaan. Now Darianne defense. Last drive, trying to recreate that. Walker Brown with the interception, who then appeared to fumble, but Blue Wave was lucky enough to fall on top of the football. On their own 20-yard line, the Falcons are going to start their drive. Big rush, Curtis. quick by Curtis. He's going to hit Kleinbeck. Stiff arms oh. man. John Kleinbeck open down the far sideline. One man to beat. He'll be wrestled down inside the 10-yard line. And Holy you, cow. Right there you see why uh, 
why Bellatoni has such a high completion percentage, just those quick, quick passes short near the line of scrimmage. But there we see Kleinbeck break one big, and oh, is there, there's a flag there, there all is. the way back at the 25. This play looks like it's coming back, Lucas. That is killer for the Falcons. Such a big momentum shift for them. But now it's all coming back. As that was a great play by Kleinbeck. Wow. There's a, a blindside block. Yeah, blindside block is gonna send it all the way down. There was pressure coming from Curtis on that play. Left the right side of the field open. Kleinbeck ran all the way inside the Darien time before eventually being taken down by Morgan Rubenstein. But now they go backwards instead of gaining 80 yards. Going to keep it. Spins big, gets hit hard. That was a brutal hit right there on Bellantoni. Tried to spin and just got leveled. Briggs McGuckin diving tackle. That is a huge hit on the QB run right there. So now second down. You see Briggs McGuckin leads the team in tackles. Shows why not afraid. Sacrifice his body. So this Ludlow team, they're actually calling their plays. They have players on the sideline holding up cards, which correspond obviously to the play sheets on their wrists. And that's how they're calling the plays, which is interesting. And interesting, something I haven't seen before, but it's obviously working. I mean, Ludlow, four and one on the year, as Bellatoni's gonna roll right. Quick pass complete. Just gain some yards, set up a reasonable third down. But it's obviously working if they're four and one, and they've turned around a lot. Back in 2016, Ludlow football went 0-10. So under head coach Mitch Ross, they've been they've been doing a great job. Mitch Ross actually was offensive coordinator here uh, at Darien High School under Rob Trafone before moving to the head coach spot for this Falcons team. Yeah, this year their offense has been on fire. They've scored 31 plus in every game that they've won so far, with the exception of that uh, game versus New Canaan, which they lost. Klein back on the near side breaks one tackle. Muscled down. Here's your number 42, Walker Brown. So that play before when it was like about second and 13, they just got, they got a quick uh, catch, made it a third and manageable, and right there they convert on the third down. Climb back over 500 yards of total offense so far this season. Big guy. Yeah, he's been getting the ball a lot so far. Flag down, play's gonna be blown be dead, false start. False start and the Falcons gonna move him back five. We see penalties killing this low drive so far, but they're able to battle past that first blindside block and get the first down, but now they're getting set back five more yards again on a first down. Just to remind you, that Kleinbeck play was called back. He ran all the way inside the 10. There's now a give to the man. Taken down by a couple. Johnny Fay, Briggs McGuckin were both in there. Look at this. Full defense rally. It's like that number eight Jack Silsby just ripping it out after the play was over. No friendliness between these two teams. Both are here to win. Ludlow is just underneath Darian in those FCAC standings. Yes, yeah, is a huge game for both teams. And Darian looking back to battle back after that loss to Greenwich. Beltoni gonna throw again. Lofts one just passed. Rupenstein again on the coverage. Gerald Jacobs. Rupenstein has been great on the coverage so far. Has the interception on the interesting play where. Looked up like it was scooped and popped into the air. And then also yeah. chased down. Rubenstein was all over Jacobs on that one. Not letting anything pass him. So third and 10. Still in their own territory is Ludlow. As they, then again, numbers are being held up. It's 
Ryan Tompkins is in the backfield. Bellatoni escaping, tries to go down the field. Receiver is hit. No flag. They're not going to call that flag. Looks like their feet got tripped up, and usually if the defenders and the uh, wide receiver's feet get tripped up, they're not going to call that. Ryan Minozzi as pleading his case as McGuckin did hit him. But I think the refs are, are saying that McGuckin had no uh, malice intent on that as he was just trying to make a play on the ball, but they just ended up getting tripped up, uh, feet tangled. Officials letting them play. Like to see that, especially at the high school level. We see as Rubenstein getting back for the punt. Yeah. Graziano is punting. Darian looking to be very careful if it's a fake. It's not left footed punt. Spiral is going to bounce. It's not a great punt. Otto's going to down it. Blue Wave offense comes out with the lead. Almost the end of the first frame here at the Darien High School Stadium field. Again, you're watching us on the DAF Media Network. Joint venture of the Darien Foundation and the Darien Athletic Foundation. Join alongside Luis Bonzano, I'm Owen Heffron. That was, it's a blackout here for Darien, but not so much under the lights as we would usually have. All black jerseys, in my opinion, have always been the best in all sports. Oh yeah, they look nice. There's a, there the another field. give to Caesar who's getting touch after touch. Yeah, Caesar, I want to uh, see them keep going back to Caesar. Big physical runner. Able to pick up a couple there. Darian starting here with good field position too. Caesar's second year on varsity, listed as a wide receiver, but with no captain, Clifton Shelton. Caesar's doing the running back duties as he bounces to the right side again. Another nice gain looks to be sh third and short. Like I said, I want I want to see them give Royal at these third and manageables, so he's not going to be forced to make those big downfield throws on third and long. Maybe force something, turn the ball over. That's not what you want to see. So these third and manageables are going to be really good for him just to settle into this offense and get some quick. Short pass is going. Darian doesn't have to snap the ball, but they do. Give it to Caesar, and he's taken down before the first down marker. They elect to run with Caesar again. Goes nowhere. It's the end of the first quarter. Darian leading Ludlow 14 to 7. Will Bonner and Charlie Tom with two touchdowns. And John Kleinbeck with the lone touchdown for the Falcons. Great way for Darian to battle back after being down seven. We'll be right back on the DAF Media Network after this. Field position flips. Anson Sakura will punt it away for the blue wave. Good punt here. It's going to bounce right near the near sideline. Darren going to let it roll down to about the 19. So Ludlow's going to start inside their own 20. Great like punt from Anson Sakura. Looks like Sakura had a defender bearing down at him. Uh, forced him to get some arc on that punt. Ended up working out for him as he pins it uh, inside the 20. Really turned it around. There was a lot of punts and kickoffs from Sakura earlier this year that set uh, the, the opposition in really good field position to start, but man, he's got three kicks to the back of the end zone already, and it's been great as 
That play goes absolutely nowhere. Tried to give it to Kleinbeck. Did not work. Kleinbeck been a threat in the air and on the ground this year for the Falcons. But mostly this game in the air. Once again, holding up those cars on the sideline, you can see on the right side of your screen for those play calls. Far sideline dropped. We'll see who was intended for. Bellatoni was looking. Ramsey Atta. That was Rubenstein Ruben again on the coverage. Master class of a game for Morgan Rubenstein. Yeah, he's been all over these Ludlow wide receivers so far. A lot of looking to the sideline. Di very different in the way these offenses have run so far for uh, Blue Wave and the Falcons. Blue Wave electing to run the ball a lot. Falcons not so much. Trying to attack the Blue Wave in the air. Large drop back. Tries to flow on a climb back. Catches it but knocked out of bounds. Who else would make that play but Morgan Rubenstein? Yeah, he's just going to come over and make the big hit on climb back. Force him out of bounds. Ben Curtis was there in coverage too, I believe. And now Falcons going to have to punt from deep in their, in their own territory. Yeah, As like the true special teams unit will come out. Last, last punt, we saw Morgan Rubenstein back there. They were being very careful with that fake, but now it's the Rooney brothers. Left-footed punt. A big kick. Going to let it bounce. Just going to let it roll. So no return. Goes out of bounds at about the 33-yard line. The Blue Wave will look to make this a two-score game. Now after those uh, three quick runs last drive, amounting to nothing, you might maybe see uh, a few more passing plays on this drive as the run game last drive didn't necessarily work, but I would still like to see them giving the ball to Caesar a little bit. Someone we haven't seen a lot of so far in this first frame is Justin Toothaker, who is our player to watch for this one. I haven't seen him at all and certainly hasn't gotten the same amount of touches that he did last week in yeah. that absolute shootout, 53 to 44 yeah. versus Ridgefield. So Toothaker last week, the big playmaker, three, three, the first three touchdowns for Ludlow. And they're just, and I've not seen him at all this game. So there's a flag. There appears a flag on the punt, so we're gonna have to redo that whole thing all over again. Very late flag. Maybe after some discussion, they decided there was a penalty. So now, even deeper in their own end zone, Sam Graziano will boot it. Another good punt. A yeah, spiral punt taken by Rooney. Staying on his feet. Taken down. Braden Joyce on the tackle. It was a dangerous catch by Rooney. If he doesn't pull that down, that could have been a muff. Going the other way for six, but he's able to corral it. Yeah, Harry Rooney there. Like I said, kind of caught it over his head. So now we're going to see Ben Rollap, the Darien player to watch. Unlike Justin Toothaker, obviously as the quarterback has gotten a ton of touches. It's going to be another give to Caesar. Just getting back to that line of scrimmage. Yeah, they put Bonner in motion there, but... Maybe try and confuse the defense, make him think it's a pass, run it, but not working out for this Darien offense right now. We see the crowd here at Darien High. Everyone in black, just like their team. Ben Rollup, one completion today. Flag down. Rollup looking to make it two completions. Rolls, finds Caesar. 
Jukes out a man. Not sure if that play is going to stand due to the flag, but but like we said, Rolap with those unique arm angles, able to, to fit it in no matter how awkward the pass might have to be. That was a great throw by him, but it looks like it's coming back. Yeah, the second illegal shift of the day for Darianne. His wind is picking up. Can feel it here. Yeah, the, these motions by Andy Grant's offense has resulted in two illegal shifts so far. So they hit Caesar not on the ground this time, but in the air. Good gain, but called back. There's some more motion. Fake the give. Roll up, rolls to his left. Shovel pass to Caesar. Open field, taken down. Great shovel pass there. I see that every day. Just a quick little shovel pass by Ben Rollap. It wasn't a very short shovel pass. That looked like to be like seven, eight yards down the field, but he able, but he's able to get it there. Not easy at all. Cooper Seek was able to shove Caesar down. And I would like to see more plays like that called by Andy Grant. Caesar's going to get it again this time on the ground. Gain of maybe a few, but could not convert. This could be four down territory for this Blue Wave offense as it looks like they're going to stay out there. Too far to kick. Too near to punt. Right in that no man's land area. So fourth and three here. Excuse me, fourth and two. Rollap takes it, rolls left, fires, has a man, it's Kevin Roche. Move the chains. He's that big body. Uh, he gets space. Oh, oh but a now flag. a flag. Maybe a little unsportsmanlike conduct or taunting. But Roach using his big body gets open, eats up those hits, uh, corrals the football. But once again, Rollap rolling to his weak side. We know he's a right-handed quarterback, and but they're rolling him out to his left a lot. But he just has that ability to to fit balls in. So yeah, they're going to those awkward arm angles. But it leads the team in receptions and yards. Looks like the flag was on Ludlow, so they're getting an extra 15 on it. It looked like Ryan Torello might have said a few words, which caused the flag to be thrown. And now we'll see Clifton Shelton, the captain, in the backfield for the first time, not Caesar. Fake the give, roll up, makes a man miss. Eventually drag down, Kleinbeck in on the tackle. Great job by roll up though. Making something out of nothing. Take another look at the Roche first down completion. Right there on, previous, on the previous play though, he was, he was caught dead to rights in the backfield, but he was able to, to, to juke past the man and get it up back up to the line of scrimmage. Gain a one, second and nine. Shelton staying out there. They'll give it to him. As a, hey, he's hitting. He loses the football. They'll say he was down by contact. But, man, what a hit. Plowing the shoulder pad. I'm not sure that looked close, Owen. Oof. Ooh. Maybe the right knee could have gotten down. I'm not sure. It's extremely close. Well, they're going to rule in Darian's favor as of right now. Shelton will come off the field. Yeah, they might want to get uh, Caesar back in the game. Caesar as is in the backfield with Rollap. Roche, as he's been having, a, Caesar's been having a good game. No reason to take him out, uh, as they see Shelton with the near fumble. Yeah, Roche was on the far, was nearest on the far sideline. Now it's Bonner as Rollap rolls out, throws back corner of the end zone, and just throws it away. Not trying to risk anything. Yeah, roll up with that great pocket presence there, able to avoid the pressure. And he just flings it out of bounds. Bonner and the big man tight end, Kevin Roche, were both there. His offense appears to stay on for fourth and eight. Interesting choice here. Sakura, who's, I believe, is one for one on field goals this year. For Sakura, this would be about like a 36-yard field goal. 
but they're going to go for it on fourth and We'll eight. keep it in the hands of Lucas, our player to watch Ben Rollap. Elects to throw, rolls to his right. Makes a man miss. At the line, throws, tipped in the air. Oh, incomplete. It's like, one it's like Bonner tripped over Connor Lane. Looks like Connor Lane fell down after the tip pass. Somersaults over his teammate. So turnover on downs, Ludlow will take the football. That was an interesting play. Rollap appeared to be just behind that line of scrimmage because he was close. We saw he did sort of a sidearm arm angle to try to fit that one in there. Although there were a lot of, uh, although the drive ended in a turnover on downs, there was a lot of positive things to look at on that drive. They were able to get it right down near the red zone, just unable to capitalize. Bellatoni now finds Kleinbeck. Kleinbeck works to the outside. Another flag. Laundry on the field again. There's number 28, Will Bremer. Black's player was able to tackle him down. Officials discussing it. I think. Appears they'll pick up the flag. Yeah. So no penalty on that one. Yeah, but Kleinbeck has been doing everything this game for the Ludlow offense. Very versatile. You know, John, Cle John, John Kleinbeck, the captain, been doing a lot of damage in the air, not so much on the ground. As they'll give it to him. And yeah, like we're talking about, n nothing, nothing much right this, there. This Darian defense has been stuffing the run game uh, all game so far as they look to continue to do that. It, it's a great front line of defenders for Darian. You have guys like Will Barber, Brant Kaiser, uh, Ryan Gately are there, Jack Silsby also on that line. It's hard to get past those guys. Carter Hagen too. And of course we see Johnny Faye, three tackles for loss, second on the team. Linebacker position, but he can get into the backfield fast as we've seen a couple tackles Love in this game. Forcing a, being forced to throw it recently. Oh. They elect to run. Kleinbeck could not get there. As just like we were talking about, this Darian defense completely stuffing the run. Let's see who is in on that TFL. And they stop on, on fourth down. Right in Gately. The, yeah, right in the backfield appeared to be Ryan Gately, the sophomore. Fourth down two. As fourth down. His offense is going to stay on the field. Is it? Timeout called. Yeah, a lot of confusion there. Yeah. John Rooney was back there looking like he was going to take the punt, but it appeared that the Falcon offense was still on the field. So timeout will be called by Darian just to get their, get their players in shape, see who's going to go out on the field. It's going to be interesting to see what uh, Ludlow calls on this fourth and short as we know that they've been stuffed on the run so far so they might be forced to pass it. Darian. But Darian also needs to be careful. They could just be trying to draw him off sides. Yeah, Darian gets some words of advice. They jog out on there. Falcons break their huddle. Like you said, they could be running to play. They could just trying to force them off sides, get a first down. We'll see here. False start. So that backfires poorly. They go backwards now. Yeah, not sure if they were going to run a player if they weren't, but false start on Ludlow. Going to force them to punt it here. It appears now fourth and seven. The punt unit will come out. John Rooney will come out to receive the kick. High snap oh. over the head of Sam Graziano. He's in his own end zone, able to work it back, and he, try, he gets the punt away, and it's going to roll to midfield. 
Wow. That is a great play by Graziano. By Even able just to get it out of the end zone. The Union College commit works around. Wow. A line drive punt that just goes straight through the special teams and just, wow. That's, that's impressive. With a high snap forcing him to roll out. Punt on the move and actually get it all the way down to midfield when he punted it like at around the 10. So now the blue wave, roll lap, looks far sideline, incomplete. Great coverage right there. Appeared to be number 10, Ryan Minozzi. On the big. Went up for the 6'8", Roche. Yeah. Couldn't get it down. Great job by Minozzi. That is a tough tack to guard a 6'8", Kevin Roche. Extremely difficult. But he just got out there, got physical with the big guy, and was able to knock it down. So roll up from the gun. On his left side is Caesar. They'll give it to him. Muscles his way for a gain of about five. Was wrapped up early but kept churning the legs. Caesar been the bell cow back so far for this Darien offense. Caesar looks a little slow to get up. A little shaken up. And I want him to take a playoff. Yeah, he's coming off the field now. Shelton will go in. Caesar gonna recover on the sideline. They'll fake it to Shelton. Roll lap, open man is Charlie Tom. He's got what it! What a catch. Inside the five. Another play rolling to roll lap's weak side. Has to flip his hips once again, and he puts it in a, in a spot where only Charlie Tom can get it. That's a great over the shoulder catch and beautiful ball, ball placement by roll lap there. Jackson frame for the Falcons was able to drag him down but man, not easy with Kevin Roche, who's 6'8", and Charlie Tom, who's 6'6". It is a near shovel. impossible, as there's gonna be a shovel to Kevin Roche. Just short of the goal line. There you go. That's a nice little two yard pick up there, getting a little bit closer. Don't expect a pass here. Closer and closer, second and goal. I just wanna give it to the physical Caesar, but. This season been, you never know with Andy Grant. They've been pounding the rock all game. Looking to their sideline. Looks like they'll just let the play clock wind down a little bit. They don't want to give Lebo too much time to respond. Fake the gift to Caesar. Roll up, wrap down, taken down by John Kleinbeck. Kleinbeck doing everything. On the defensive side and offensive side, we see him get in here unblocked. Caesar, they, give, they fake the gift to Caesar. Kleinback ran right past and not fooled at all. Went straight for roll lap. Ludlow calling timeouts here. Is, looks yeah. like they want a chance to get the ball back Yeah, with around 2.30 left on the clock. Third and goal for the Blue Wave, Lucas. What do you think they need to do? What should they talk about in this timeout? I mean, here, you can't. You gotta tell uh, QB Ben Rolap, you don't have to force anything here. Can't force a turnover, and uh, and if if anything bad happens, just go down, throw it away. You can set up a kick for Sakura here, make it a two possession game. But don't expect uh, a risky call here. Could play might, conservative. Might just wanna play conservative, yeah, take your three here. Another give to Caesar. Is definitely a viable option. They're gonna come out in trips right here. From the far side coming in, it's Connor Lane, Kevin Roche, and Bonner, and they will pass. Roll out plenty of time. It. Sidearm slings it incomplete. Diving for it was Look. the man who set up, was set them up in the red zone, Charlie Tom. Looks like he had a step on the DV there. But roll lap, that is a difficult throw to fit it in on the on the outside there, but. Especially from, yeah, especially from that angle, he dropped down to that sidearm arm slot. But 
couldn't quite get it. John Kleinbeck was in coverage. Looked like maybe Cole Betzo was there too. There's a linebacker and a cornerback. He's gonna take their three here. Sakura now. Field goals up. High and it is good. 17-7. The waiver up with 231 to go. Two score game. That's a big kick by Sakura there, making it a two possession game. As we'll see this little offense try and respond with the limited time they have left in the half. So down by two scores now, Lucas. First drive, picture perfect. Scored in under two minutes, right? What do they have to do now? They've, they've, we've seen they've thrown picks. The ground game isn't working. They've done a lot of quick hitters. What does the little offense need to do differently to capitalize? Yeah, that's difficult, but you, you have to get that run game going. And and as we know, Morgan Rufenstein's been locking down the pass the pass game for on this Ludlow offense. So this run game is gonna be very important for Ludlow. They gotta get it going. Not sure if they'll do it on this drive as they have such little time left, but but just get those, just take what the defense gives you, get those dink and dunk plays for Ludlow as they're doing on the first drive, just those short passes. But that running game being is completely playing a non-factor right now. So Cora will boot this one away. 30 seconds until two minutes left is, is taken and just past the 20 yard line. Gets, I believe, number, look to be number 10 Ryan Minozzi. On the return. Yeah, on this drive, expect some short passes here. Maybe more to the, towards the sideline, as there's only two and a half minutes left in the half. But Ludlow's just making, or just looking to make it a, a one score game before the half. Darian does get the ball for the start of the third quarter. So points here would be very beneficial for the Falcons. Four wide receivers lined up, climb back in the backfield. Looks to go to the outside. Short outside passes. They're going to wind the clock, though. He went out of bounds going backwards. So, yeah, number 10, Ryan Minozzi again. Met by Rupenstein, shoved him out. The clock's going to continue running here. Two, and six. With two minutes left. Ryan Minozzi, three touchdowns on the season. Just a couple of legs, tipped up in the air. It's gonna be almost, oh, picked, almost off. picked off. Johnny Faye was in the area. Faye unable to get his hands below it. All oh, right there, so Looks close. Looks like Carter Hagen was trying to catch it too. Both were going for it. And just knocked off the outstretched arms. Johnny Faye almost had that one. Faye's second year on varsity, played defensive line last season, making the move to linebacker. And now third and six for the Falcons, who have a, had a poor conversion percentage today. Is he gonna sling it? No one there. Awkward arm angle. Oh, oh, and now they'll say. Let's see, was it helmet to helmet? No, just no, a just, big hit. After, after the ball was already gone. Charlie Mahoney shaken up for the Falcons. And Mahoney gets hit. Way past after the ball sails over his head. So that's why they call the flag there. That's gonna that will spring life into this Ludlow drive right here, yeah, as no. it would have been third down, but now they get a 15-yard penalty. An unnecessary hit would have made it fourth down for the Blue Wave, but instead now they get a first down, and Ludlow. Yeah, those are the plays you can't have type of uh, mistakes you can't have for Darien. A little dump off to Kleinbeck. Forward progress gonna be stopped. Carter Hagen met him quickly. Ton of guys in there, Silsby got in there. Yeah, just rallying to Kleinbeck, this whole Darien defense surrounding him. Not letting the captain go anywhere. Now second and 11 as that last dump off to Kleinbeck went backwards. 
Bellatoni steps up, throws across the middle, it's complete. That's a great catch right there. Looks to hit number 21, Jackson Frame. A little slant across the middle, Walker Brown. Yeah, Bellatoni fit into a tight window right there to Jackson Frame, who comes up with a difficult catch as he was surrounded by Darien defenders. But that was a great play by Bellantoni. Captain Jack Silsby now coming on to the field. So is Sean McGarren. The senior defensive back is Bellatoni looks to escape and can't. Ball is loose. Uh, I think we're gonna... We'll see Brant Kaiser was there. Jack Silsby, Kaiser knocked the ball loose. I was gonna say it's an incomplete pass. Mm. Yeah, they will. So possession will stay with Ludlow. A great job of Silsby and Kaiser. Two great players on this defensive line for the wave. Frank Kaiser, physical guy, plays rugby in the spring. Great job to knock the ball loose. Gone to this formation a lot, Ludlow, two wide receivers on each side. Christopher Bellatoni fires off the hands of Ryan O'Malley. Chance maybe for an interception was intended for Charlie Mahoney. Walker Brown almost came up with a pick there off a the deflection. Could have been his second pick off a deflection again, just. It's a great play by O'Malley. Just undercutting the curl route, and getting a hand on it. Ryan O'Malley, one of he and the other Ryan, Ryan Gately, two sophomores that get a lot of playing time on defense as he's gonna stay on Mahoney on this near side. Bellatoni rolls to his right, steps up, gonna run for it. It's a great tackle from behind by Gately, it looks like. The hits, turns on the burners. Was going for the ball, would've been nice to strip it out there, but 19 seconds left as now a flag is called on the defense. Unsportsmanlike oh, conduct. That's gonna conduct. move it 15 more yards. That's the second mental error mistake right there by this Darien defense. And that is, that puts them in, that puts them within the 30 yard line, which for Sam Graziano is very much so viable to kick and make it a one touchdown game heading into the locker rooms for halftime. So this Ludlow offense getting their drive extended more and more by just these mental errors by the Darien defense. Gailey makes, a nice, Gailey makes a nice play, but it's all for naught. Bellatoni, Kleinbeck hits him quickly. Kleinbeck trying to get out of bounds, and he can. Great job by Kleinbeck, working from the far left hash mark all the way to the near sideline to stop that clock. They're gonna be able to have a couple end zone shots here. Possibility run a run a couple quick plays, then send Graziano out for a kick. Definitely don't want to force anything here. Definitely want to play it safe, get your points. You know, a touchdown would be nice here, but you can't have a balance on you throw a pick right here. Take a couple end zone shots. Is timeout going to be called by the wave? As we'll discuss it over. And Lucas, like you said, 12 seconds left. Darian, they do get the ball for the start of the third quarter. What should they be looking for here, backed up with their bust to their own end zone? Uh, definitely just do not let anything get over the top open. Keep keep these uh, low, low wide receivers in front of you. Make sure nothing gets behind you. And just try and force them to kick this uh, somewhat long field goal as it'd be around 35 yard or 36 yarder. Huddles break. The Gately Barber. Johnny Fay there. Just a couple people in the on the line for Darianne Fay, middle linebacker. Climb back to Bellatoni's right. See those rush yards on the screen there. As he jumps, he oh, gets taken geez. down. How about that? Liam Calabro. Fantastic play. Unblocked. Just gets it. Gets back in there. Looks like Brant Kaiser was back 90. there too. Yeah, number 90, Brant Kaiser. 
got back there fast. So Bellatoni so. engulfed in Darien defenders right there, and that might push him out of field goal range. Timeout called by Ludlow to stop the clock with eight seconds left. Mm -hmm. Ludlow's gonna have one more timeout. They're gonna need a quick play right here. You can you can throw it in bounds here as they have one more timeout. You could take a shot to the end zone quickly. You can take a, maybe a quick hitter to the outside. It's a lo large part of the Ludlow game plan is those quick hitters. I think right now you're going to want to run one of those quick hitters, try and make it an easier field goal for Graziosa. As going to have trips to the left of Bellatoni. Mahoney lined up to the right of the right tackle. He'll just elect to block. Bellatoni rolling to his left, clock winding down, gets out of bounds with one second left. They're gonna have a shot at a field goal here if they want to take it. So a great but. job mentally by Christopher Bellatoni to see the clock and get out of bounds. It's a good play by him. Pick up those four yards, make an easier field goal. On the far left hash mark, look to kick. Bellatoni so far today, 15 for 24 as we saw. So he's having himself a nice game. So Ludlow will use their final timeout. As it looks like. As a timeout for Darien. A timeout Darien, excuse me. As they're gonna ice the kicker there. Does not appear to be Sam Graziano was lined up to take that kick. It appeared to be Nico Morano. So instead of going with their senior kicker, they're going to go with their sophomore. The lefty hoping to cut the lead down to seven before we enter halftime. This will be a 43, yard field goal. 43 yards for the Falcons. Snap is good, hold is good, boot is up. It is no good. Wide right. And we will enter halftime with the Darianne Blue Wave leading 17 to seven over the Fairfield Ludlow Falcons. So a lot of stuff to be cleaned up here for, the, for Ludlow. Darianne maybe looking to more capitalize on those chances. But I'd say overall, some entertaining first half football. Again, you're watching the DAF Media Network, a joint venture of the Darien Foundation and the Darien Athletic Foundation. Joined alongside Lucas Malzahn, I'm one half round. We will be right back for the start of the second half after this. The Darien Foundation was founded in 1998 by Richard and Maureen Chilton, and the thesis behind that founding was to bring technology to the Darien public school systems. And that launched us, and that got us going, and through technology and capital project initiatives. We've now funded over five and a half million over the last 24 years to build a better Darien. Our board really likes to get involved and assist the partners that we collaborate with, whether it's a grant for a youth project or a grant from a community service, schools, the police. Often they come to us with ideas that we help them bring to fruition. The Darien Foundation recently awarded the Darien Police Department two grants. One was for LaserShot and the other for Faro technology. LaserShot technology is based on decision making. It may come down to using their firearm, but in reality, we would like them to talk the situation down where you use less lethal force, and this program allows us to do that. Police drop the gun! Ferro technology gives us a 360 degree view, catching all the points we need to catch in our accident scene. It also takes a lot less time. This allows us to open up roads, get traffic flowing a lot quicker than we ever used to be able to. We can also map the inside of buildings. We can use it at outdoor crime scenes, indoor crime scenes. It's really used for a plethora of investigations. It's a tool that most other departments may not have their hands on just yet. And thanks to the Darien Foundation, we have that technology. 
At Home in Darien is a nonprofit organization that helps senior citizens to remain living independently in their home and in the community. We provide important services to help them do so, such as transportation. Thanks to the Darien Foundation, we have this amazing new van, and we are so excited about it and what it'll do for the community. From all standpoints, this is going to be a real improvement in the services we provide, both in terms of safety and comfort. The Darien Foundation is important to the community in the scope that they reach out to answer needs. Post 53 is the town's ambulance service. We respond to over 1,600 emergency calls a year for a vital service that has been here for 51 years. The technology upgrades provided by the Darien Foundation has been a game changer for us. It's allowed us to improve our training. It has helped us hone our skills. You don't know how important an ambulance is until you actually need it. Thanks to our partnership with the Darien Foundation, who's provided all this technology and several grants throughout the years, we're able to continue to be prepared, to be well-trained and well-staffed, to respond 24 hours a day, seven days a week, whenever you need it. The Darien Foundation is really excited to be able to launch a new program for the Darien Schools, which will benefit students K through 12 in all seven schools. This is the new robotics program, which will be an extracurricular opportunity for students to build robots, compete against other leagues, and collaborate together. Our robotics program is going to benefit students in so many ways. In regular classes, students are always looking for the right answer, that there's only one way to answer something. Robotics is completely different. In robotics, you learn that there are multiple solutions to every problem. You learn that you have these obstacles that you have to overcome. You have to really be a creative problem solver. And most importantly, you need to persevere. Early on in the process, the Darien Foundation reached out to administration and the offer to provide funding for a project and it just dovetailed beautifully to the goals of the strategic plan. I look forward to continuing to work closely with the Darien Foundation, both on this project and other projects down the line. We welcome ideas for possible grants. We'd like to do grants that promote and strengthen our community. Sometimes it's from an organization, sometimes it's from our emergency service partners, or it's from the Darien Public Schools. One of our most popular grants, which was the Playground by the Sound, came to us from four Darien moms who said, let's get together and figure out how to build this. Thanks to the generosity of our board members and officers, every dollar you give to the Darien Foundation goes directly to the grants that we're supporting. I invite all of you to help us move our community further and support the Darien Foundation.
DAF Media is actively seeking financial support. Founded in 2017, DAF Media has quickly become Southwestern Connecticut's source for quality sports, arts, and community programming. If you like what you see on the DAF Media Network and want to help us continue to deliver high-quality broadcasts while teaching lifelong STEM, communication, organization, and leadership skills, please email us at sponsor at dafmedia.org. We are a registered 501c3 organization. Darianne retaking the field as we start this second half. Just leading Darianne is over the Falcons, 17 to seven. Falcons started out hot. John Kleinbeck scored an opening touchdown with a minute 30 into the first quarter. Then, But then just like that, a Bonner touchdown for the wave, a Charlie Tom touchdown, an answer core field goal, makes it 17-7, 17 unanswered points for the Blue Wave. Lucas, what does Ludlow have to do to regain, get back into this game at the start of the second half? Ludlow, they really need to get that run game going. Uh, I think less than 20 yards in the first half rushing. And they also just need to go back to what they were doing on that first drive. They need to take those short passes, take what the defense gives them, uh, and not get themselves into those third and long situations. Just take those short passes. So homecoming game so far has looked good for the Blue Wave, but let's take a look at uh, some of the games around the FCAC. 
So, of course, DHS homecoming is Fairfield Ludlow here at Darien. Yesterday, St. Joseph played Ridgefield, the team that Ludlow beat last week. Stanford played Staples. Ward played McMahon. Greenwich played Trumbull. And today, Norwalk plays Bridgeport Central. Danbury plays West Hill. And right now, Wilton is beating New Canaan 7-0. And now, as Ludlow retakes the field, let's take a look at our first half stats. Which... Are not on this. There we go. First half stats. So, and now they're gone again. Apologies for the difficulties here. Trying to get those first half stats up. What a trouble in the booth. It's all right. Big crowd here trying to clear the field. Had some kids on the field during halftime. They run across the field. Yeah, represent the youth, couple flag football teams, some young cheerleaders. As it looks like we lost those first half stats. Something I can tell you though, Lucas, from that quick look that we got at it. Possession for this game has been in Ludlow's favor. Looked like 15 minutes to eight minutes for the time of possession split. Yeah, I mean, the Darien scoring drives have been relatively quick. Uh, obviously, on uh, one of the drives, Tom had that had that deep bomb. There was a lot of chunk plays, which obviously don't take a lot of time, as opposed to Ludlow, usually just taking those short dink and dunk uh, plays and some runs, but usually those, those short plays for Ludlow not necessarily uh, uh, going anywhere, but just taking a lot of time running the clock down. Yeah, a lot of turnovers too. Walker Brown interception, Morgan Rubenstein interception. They haven't had to go very far to get into the end zone or to capitalize off some points. As it's like Miko, uh, excuse me, Miko Morano is back there to Kick this one away. A very far left hash mark. Underway for the start of the second half. Harry Rooney bounces it off two. He's going to pick it up. Breaks one tackle. Tries to work back across. Breaks another. Flag down. Yeah, this return might be coming back. Number 88 throwing up his arms, I believe that is. It's Tyler Spellman, Spellman. the junior wide receiver. It's going to be a block in the back. So not great field position on the return as the Rooney uh, gain. That's a great kick gonna by go back. Ludlow. Just sees Rooney on the on the left hash, so he kicks it to the right hash, allows allows his guys to get downfield and make that play. See Darian backed up way in their own end zone. Some of the worst field position they've seen today. Three wideouts. The motion Bonner. Give it to Caesar up the middle. Gain of maybe a few before Caesar. taken down. And so far, it's been Luke Caesar taking the majority of the touches for the Blue Wave offense. Not typically a running back. He's been really physical in the run game. Yeah, but he's been great in that spot in this one. They'll fake it to him this time. Roll lap, steps up, trying to run for it. He'll slide down. Gave Caesar a quick look. Already past the line of scrimmage, however. That's a good play by Rollup. Doesn't see anything downfield. Decides to take off, take the easy yardage, make it a third and short. Certainly manageable here. Like you said, Lucas, under 20 rushing yards on the game for Ludlow. If you're this Ludlow, is the 19 mark. You just can't have that in a game because now you're, you're only turning to one facet of your offense, which is just the passing game. And you don't like that because that has already resulted in 
uh, two interceptions as, we, as we've seen. Roll off screen to Caesar. Gets around one, gets hit hard by his own teammate, Dylan Geddes. But he's able to get the first down. Some good block, but ran, runs right into the right shoulder of Dylan Geddes. The first down now is Clifton Shelton. Will come onto the field. Caesar's gonna step off after the big hit from his own teammate Geddes. For Kevin Roach on the near sideline, one on one. No safety help. See if, yeah, see if they go there. Roll up, looking the whole way. He goes to him out. Oh, just past the arms. Say Flag the, uh, down. John Kleinbeck can't believe it. It's like Andy Grant saw what I saw, the one-on-one, -on -one, no safety help over top either. Just give your guy Kevin Roach, Kevin Roach a shot up top. Yep, Ryan Minozzi. And he's able to draw the there. flag on um, Minozzi to the PI. Well, Blue Wave looking over at their sideline. Caesar joins Just the offense back still now. Still going to leave Roach one on one at the bottom with no safety help. Again, they'll give it this time to Caesar. Big opening. Oh, ball comes out. They'll say he's down. Roach fell on top of it, but they will say that he's down. But a great run oh, by Luke Caesar. Just coming back and say holding on the offense there. I will yeah. say, yeah. That was a great run by Caesar, though. Interesting choice there. Most likely a designed run because, like you said, Lucas Roche was left one on one. And a lot of this Blue Wave offense is built around the run pass options where Rollap could take it if he doesn't like the give to, in this case, Caesar. A lot of the time it's Clifton Shelton, but especially this game in being Caesar Hole. Yeah, those look, Hole, look to the hot route, which would be Roche. And then if it's not there, keep it himself. It was definitely one of those RPO plays. You saw Rollap staring down Roche at the bottom of your screen here. And another fake give. Yeah, this time we'll take it himself, try to get back, and he'll be taken down way behind the line of scrimmage. Uh, maybe trying to work back. Second and long, I just expect a run play here by Andy Grant. Try to shorten the distance to set up a more manageable third down. The second and 16 is no easy task. Offensive line for Darian has been pretty good in this one. Still no real deep safety help by a slow low offense their defense. Sidearm sling, not on target. Was looking for Will Bonner. Already has a touchdown in this one. Slow low defense really condensed in the box. It's working for them as they're swarming everywhere. So we'll have to drop down into that sidearm arm angle. But yeah, like you said, Lucas, great job by Ludlow on this drive. Especially after that holding penalty, not allow them to go anywhere and not recover from it. Now you're one of those third and longs, roll lap. Don't force anything here. Rolls to his left side, sets his feet and fires and way high. Intended for Roche, he's 6'8", but he's not that tall. But the flag is down. So it'll be on Darianne. They're gonna drive him five more yards back, but they might. Lolo yeah, almost most likely decline this one. So Sakura will come out, punt it. It's a great start for that Ludlow defense now. And they seem to get that offense out there and working like they were on that first drive of the first half. Drive lasted not even three minutes before Ludlow will get this football back. Second punt of the day, it appears. It's a low snap, Sakura handles it nicely. High punt, fair catch called for and it's buffed. And it rolls and it's gonna be recovered by the waves. Gerald Jacobs muffs the punt. And that is a great punt by Sakura, that hang time.
so, so long in the air. And Jacobs feels the pressure. When goes to fall to the ground. From a Darien defender bearing down on him, and he just muffs it. Looks like Chase Lane was able to recover it. We'll see again on this replay. It's like yeah, muff, it's like pump, it was muff pump by Gerald. Yeah. Thomas Herget right there. And then the ball pops out. Wow. And Lane falls on it. So Ludlow does not, in fact, get this football back. It'll be Darien inside the 20 yard line. Motion Bonner across, shovel pass to him. Tries to get to the outside, makes one miss, and eventually is taken down by John Kleinbeck. It's a quick flip right there to Bonner when they put him in motion. It's gonna be an easy five yard gain for them. But what a turn of events in this one. You're, you're Ludlow, you're feeling great. You get that stop, and then you force the second punt of the game, and then you and then Gerald Jacobs just muffs it, and now you find yourself backed up against your own end zone. They're gonna fake a shovel pass now. Wide open is Luke Caesar. Breaks the tackle and is in for the touchdown. I mean, he was wide open on that wheel route. Darian, touchdown. Totally that was an easy one for Rolat to find him. And then he spins out of a tackle and scores a touchdown. Let's see again, fake the shovel pass. Perfectly plays back shoulders, able to spin. Makes a man miss, can't quite see who that was, but the muff punt and another, and another mental error and turnover by the Falcons leads Darianne to score a touchdown, and Just perhaps like capitalize with an extra point here from Sakura. Stop it. Through. Ludlow, they had that great defensive drive they put together, force a punt, and just like that, two plays later, Darian's already in the end zone after that muff. Andy Grant certainly happy coming off his first loss as head coach, of course filling in for Mike Forge, who stepped down and joined Norwalk as their head coach. But certainly Darian has switched things up. 24 points on the day for the Wave. See again, breaks the tackle. Caesar gets in there. He's been running on the ground all game, but great job today for his third catch. He's able to get one in in the air. So Cora now will kick it away after his extra point. Kick to the end zone. Jacobs was able to grab it that time, but they'll say it was in the end zone and they'll put place the ball at the 20 yard line. This, so is, a re this is a really important drive for Ludlow. They need to capitalize on this if they want to get back in this game. It's gonna be their first offensive possession of this second half. Bellatoni's gonna look to throw. It's dropped. Yeah, one of those short passes there, but that one was just dropped. He was open. I believe he was looking for number 21. Appears to be Jackson Frame. Yeah, I mean, that, that was a good play design. Had him open. Could have been a good gain, but just dropped. And you can't have that if you're Ludlow and you're kind of scrapped back into this game. Bellatoni has over the 91 yards he needed to pass 1,000 on the season, so great job by him. Is similar route, he's gonna hit frame this time. Yeah, and if Ludlow can just keep on getting those plays, just find the open zones in the Darien defense, they're gonna be able to drive down the field pretty quickly. Bremer knocks him out of bounds. So now it's third and one for the Falcons. Under eight minutes to play now in the third quarter. 
So they're gonna give it, and Kleinbeck is gonna be stopped short of the first down marker. This this Darien run defense has been excellent all game. Silsby wrapped up the leg. Swarming to Kleinbeck once again. Fourth and two. Fourth and two. We'll go with the risky call and trust the offense. Yeah, at this point in the game, they're almost forced to go for it. Down three possessions. See if Mitch Ross wants his team to call play. They will. Oh, Tony throws. He's got a man. Breaks one tackle. Bremen and O'Malley are there to get him down. See who caught that one. It was frame. So three targets to Jackson Frame on this drive so far. Two have resulted in completions. And now they find themselves at midfield. Yeah, Frame a little nice run after the catch there. Get him upfield. Bellatoni throws again. Lofts one and it's complete. It's a high pass there. Good catch. Ryan Minozzi on the completion. High pass was able to Snag it out of the air, bring it down. Will Bremer threw him out. Bellatoni from the gun. Sets his feet. Long pass downfield, has a man open, and it's caught. And he was wide open there. Had another man clearing out, looks like. Yeah, great, catch. On yeah, the great catch. catch on the sideline by Minozzi. There's another man clearing out the safety and the corner deep, who was, looks like that was Mahoney, the junior wide receiver. And that just left an open pocket of space for, for Minozzi. Yeah, huge chunk of yards gained there for the Falcons. It's a big play for them to try and get back in this game. Not even thinking about running it. They'll fire down the field. Bellatoni could not hit. Minozzi again. Was open in midfield. Yanked it too far to the left. Would have been a nice chunk of yards. See a lot of the pink gear for Ludlow. Breast cancer awareness as Bellatoni hits Minozzi again. Rufenstein appears to be there. That's a nice gain right there. Rufenstein is there, yeah. Make it a third and short now. Very doable for the Falcons offense, and you would think if they, they're also holding up pictures on the sideline, not just numbers. Like you said, Lucas, very interesting style of calling these plays. Yeah, they have the players hold up cards. Bellatoni looking to go to the end zone. Contact, gonna throw the and flag. there's a flag gonna be thrown. I don't know if that was a catchable ball. We'll get the replay on it. Not believing it is Morgan Rupenstein, who's been locked down all game. Ooh. He was looking for Charlie Mahoney. I'm not sure about that. That was a good sales job by Mahoney. When he did sell it pretty well. Not sure how much contact was there, but he dove pretty hard and he's gonna draw the flag there. Now, like you said, might have not been catchable, but Mahoney did a good job of making sure that the refs knew that there was contact. Flag came in, not really as the contact was happening, but maybe a couple seconds after they were on the ground. A yeah, pretty late flag there thrown. Bellatoni on the give to Tompkins. And Lolo can still get a first down here. They get to the two yard line. So that's a, that's a good run on first down. Excuse me, that was Gerald Jacobs maybe it looked like, not Ryan Tompkins, but they do use Ryan Tompkins a lot in this, in this red zone. He leads the team in rushing touchdowns with seven on the year. So don't be surprised to see number eight in there. No, one on one at the bottom. So they're gonna go to the They'll throw, and it's going to be off the hand of Sean McGarren. A 
Piers will get another look at it. Just past Sean McGarren's hand. Great play by Sean McGarren to get his hand up, get maybe, maybe block the receiver's view there of the ball. His brother Mac played football last year. It's his Sean's second year on varsity. Also is a basketball player too for the Blue Wave basketball team. Bellatoni again joined by two, floats one up for a fade and Morgan Rubenstein shuts it down like he's been doing all game. Great job there. Getting physical with Mahoney. He had a nice jam at the line there, forcing that incompletion. Just over five minutes left to play. Third quarter, fourth down and goal. Gonna go for it here. Excuse me, fourth and six. So it appears if they do get to that two yard line, there will be a first down. Kleinbeck is in the backfield. They're gonna throw across the middle. He's gonna be stopped. Sean McGarren stops Ramsey Ada at the one yard line. But a first down. Yeah, big. He got the first down there. I think if, if Balatoni let him a little bit, that could have easily been in for six. But pass a little bit behind, but still get the first down, and they're just going to look to punch it in right here. Kleinbeck is back there, the captain with Balatoni. But they'll give it to. That was a low snap. Yeah, it could have been risky there. It looks like they. Gave it to Ryan Tompkins, who again used it at the goal line, but a great stop by Walker Brown right there. Knees down before the arm extends, and that ball touches a little bit of the goal line. Yeah, that low snap there really hindered him from getting the head start they wanted. Kleinbeck, direct snap. He's going to get hit and spin his way for a touchdown. So Kleinbeck took the snap with Jacobs on his left and Tompkins on his right. Great play call. Ludlow touchdown. First score of, or excuse me, second score of this second half. So let's see if Ludlow will. Ludlow's going to kick the extra point, but great job of bouncing back after that touchdown. It's a great drive they just put together and scored a touchdown to get themselves back in this game. Sam Graziano, Union College commit, will kick the extra point. Up and good. 14 to 24. Darianne still leads. Just over four minutes left. They'll get the football back. Last drive was the Caesar touchdown on that wheel route. Yeah, as we know, Ludlow is still very much in this game. Turnover could happen at any moment. So they can't be hanging their heads just yet. They got to fight, and they are still very much in this game, especially after that touchdown. So a lot of time left. Yeah, a lot of sloppy football in the first half. It looks like on both sides, besides that muff punt, it seemed to be cleaned up a little bit, de defense and offensive sidewise. Nico Morano looks like he will kick it away. So Sam Graziano doing the extra point and field goal duty, or extra point duties. Morano doing the field goals and longer kicks. As the left, he'll give it swift kick and send it down to Rooney. Oh, the There's a yeah, short out of squib. Goes out of bounds, flag thrown. So Darian's gonna set themselves up. Not where the ball went out of bounds, but at much better field position. At the uh, 30 or 40 yard line, I believe. Looks like they'll give it to him at the at the 35. 35. So blue wave football. Seen a lot of the same guys so far between Roche, Bonner, and Caesar. Oh, 
Roche motions. Rolap takes it. Pitch to Caesar. Caesar still, rattled down by two guys. Still Ludlow running that same defense. They've got one on one with no safety help on uh, the boundary wide receivers. So if I'm Andy Grant, I'm looking to take advantage of that. And really stacking the box is this Falcons defense. As we take a look at Ben Rolap's stats for today, our player to watch. Eight completions, two touchdowns. Fake to Caesar. Roll lap. Looks open, man. It's going to be intercepted. Was looking for Roche, but it is picked off. Just like that. Like I said, turnover could happen at any time. Now there's one right there. I think he had him down the seam. Just throw a little bit behind to the back shoulder. I think if he let him more towards the inside, that could have been a completion, but. Yeah, it appears to be Ryan Torello on the interception. Like you said, Lucas. Turn over there. Yeah. Ludlow's right here back in it. Yeah, so still a two-score game, but Ludlow a huge chance to capitalize before this third quarter ends. Darian Offense will head into the tent, and like you said, that throw by Rolap was on the wrong side of Roche. As well, Tony now swatted away. Great play by Ryan Gately to get an arm on it. So second down and 10 for Fairfield yeah. Ludlow. Just uses that swim move, gets both hands up and knocks it down. Gets right around. I believe that was the captain, Colin Kingston, for Fairfield Ludlow. Three turnovers on each side now for Ludlow and Darien. So forget what we said about how the second half looked clean so far. Bellatoni again, great, great play by Will Bremer. Gets the arm around there, smacks it out. It's a great play to undercut the out route and just swat it away. Now reaches right around Jackson Frame. That is textbook. Get your get your left hand on that outside hip and just swat it with your right. Great job by the junior first year varsity player. Christopher Bellatoni. Trying to escape pressure. Flicks it. Just over the head and out of bounds. Pocket collapsed quickly. Johnny Fay was there. Diving appeared to be. Could not quite see, but that pocket did collapse fast. We'll look at it again. Looked like Jack Barber just couldn't quite get there. Excuse me, Will Barber. Jack is his brother. And Johnny Fay in there too, forcing uh, Balotoni to roll out, and that for and forces that high pass. So a punt now in order on fourth and ten. Yeah. It's a fake. Yeah, there's no one deep. For Darien. Not, didn't know what to do. Ben Curtis will get there and wrap him up. Not, so confusion. Not sure what that was. For Darien, they, they did not have any, any punt returner deep. They had no one deep. Morano just grabbed it and started running. I'm not sure why. Extremely interesting. But great job by Ben Curtis. He's been a huge part of this defense all year, especially in that Fairfield prep game where he had the lone touchdown of the game, that pick six, where they won 10-2. to two. Yeah, broken play there. He, he can still punt it there. Very interesting if that was designed. Yeah. But like you said, Lucas, no, no one was back deep for Darianne. Defense will go to the tent. Rollap takes it. On the give, he's tripped up. Looks like he was trying to give it Charlie to Tom. Yeah, Charlie Tom. But Charlie Tom gets tripped up and just gets back to the line of scrimmage. Already has a rushing touchdown in this one, looking to give it to him again. <laughs> Darian definitely. See there, Ludlow still not getting the run game. Yeah. Only four yards in this quarter. Tom motions. Give it to Caesar. Tom, the lead blocker. Now Ludlow doing a good job stuffing the run. It's a nice tackle right there by number five, uh, Ada, the DB. So third down and six. 
inside the 20 yard line of Ludlow. Perhaps see a passing play for Rollap here. Already has two touchdowns on the day to Bonner and Caesar. Found Bonner in the first quarter and then Caesar earlier in this one. They'll give it to Caesar again. He bounces outside, but it's tripped up. It's another great run stop by this Ludlow defense. It's going to force Darien. I think they're going to stay out there. Yeah, just Still deciding. Looked like he got tripped up yeah. on the legs they're gonna, they're of gonna, Jack Stewart. They're going to bring out Sakura now. Already has a field goal in this one back in the previous quarter. Putting the trust in him again. 36 yarder. Sakura here. Ready for the kick. Good snap, good hold. Field goal's up and through. 100% on the year. And Sakura. His third field goal on the season. Great kick there by Sakura, real reliable. Darien goes up by 13. A minute left in the third quarter. As the Falcons really need to limit these, limit these turnovers and get into the end zone. Yeah, big drive for Lolo here. They, uh, that was a great, great drive last time on the touchdown. But now they need to come out and do it again if they want to have a chance at winning this game. Cora, ready to kick it off. Another big boot. It's gonna be taken at the goal line. Be wrapped up, taken down. A couple guys in there on the tackle. Gerald Jacobs, I believe, was the one I tried to get it up. It was stopped right around the 15 yard line of the Falcons. Great coverage by the Darian special teams. And Sakura with that big boot, big hang time, letting his guys get down there and make that play. A really great kick. And he's been a great addition to the squad, like we said earlier, after Tucker Stevens did leave for New Canaan. Bellatoni will take it. Throws tipped up, up in the air, and falls incomplete. Fell right in front of Carter Hagen. Carter Hagen looking for the ball after it got tipped up. Didn't know where it was. But if he looked up a couple seconds earlier, he might have been able to get that one, and that just would have been disaster for the Falcons, setting them up back again, the Darien offense inside the 20. Checking the play sheet. Gonna get trips right here. Or no, wait. Bellatoni floats one, it's gonna be oh. intercepted. They ran that play before, but this time it doesn't work out as Klein back. It, it gets intercepted right in front of him. Looks to be, let's see on this angle of the replay. I believe that is Will Bremer, number 28. That was a great job just to cut under Klein back there and jump up and make that pick. The lacrosse player, Will Bremer. Great job of Will Bremer. I mean, he just saw him throw and he just drove on that ball. Great job to get up there. Use the athleticism, jump up high. Great job, so now he sets up Ben Rolap and the rest of the Blue Wave offense inside the 25 for a nice first and 10.
Willap will give it to Caesar. Caesar pushes defender off, stays on his feet. Gets to the outside before eventually being taken down. He's a big physical runner, Caesar, Luke Caesar. He just keeps driving down Ludlow defenders. Yeah, shoves Ramsey out of off of him. Great job. So Darian does lead 27-14 as this third quarter winds down, but more yards in total for Fairfield Ludlow, which just goes to show that the turnovers have been the thing to hurt them the most. As like we said earlier, Darian does not have to go far. Giving them good Ross going to loft to the end zone, but tripped up and falling is Connor Lane. I'm not going to throw the flag there, but it's going to be the end of the third quarter. End of the third. Take another look. Not the best angle, but was broken up, so nothing brewing there. 27-14 at the end of three on the DAF Media Network. We will be right back after this. So Darian will travel to the other side of the field. Third down and nine. Roll up will take it, fake the give. Look down the middle, it's caught by Kevin Roche who runs in for the touchdown. Flag thrown. I'm gonna say that's taunting on Most Roche. Most likely an excessive spike. celebration. But that was a great job by him. Just using his body to get open on the slant route and just, and just get physical on the defender. Right over Ryan Minozzi. Just yanks it right in front of his face. Great job by Rolap to fire that one in there. That was great ball placement right there by Rolap. So Darianne, so far this season, adds to the fact that they are a fourth quarter team. So far this season, if this extra point is good, it would make it 38 points they've scored so far in the third quarter alone this season. Well, as the kick is good. So 38 points so far Darian has scored this season. And get this, they've allowed zero. So right now if you're Ludlow, you're looking to break that streak for the season because you have to get back in this game. You're down by 20 points. You're down by three scores. That touchdown is killer for Ludlow, but you're down and you have to score on this drive. You have to. You can't make another one of those turnover you can't have another turnover you can't make another one of those mistakes or else this game is just is just going to be over would not expect head coach Mitch Ross to play anything conservatively here you need touchdowns you need to score you're in the last quarter which is where Darian thrives so we will we will see how Bellatoni runs this offense this is where you start digging deep in the playbook Owen you everything else has not been working as that penalty is going to be enforced on the kickoff here. Yeah, they'll go back in right. Sikor instead of booting it from the 40. Yeah, from he's going to have to go from the 25 yard line. But Lolo's going to have to dig back deep in that playbook and try and find something that pops. Sikora, short little kick. It's going to be fielded, it's just going to be caught in by Braden Joyce, who's knocked out of bounds. Interesting kick there. So Ludlow will get it back. Couldn't have score. Pretty decent field position for them. They want to go, go down here and score quick right at midfield. 
Again, you're watching us on the DAF Media Network. I'm Owen Heffron, Lucas Malanzano, joined alongside me. And it's Ludlow down 14 to 34 against the Blue Wave as Bellatoni takes it, rolls to his right. It's a quick complete That's to Otta, but his hit and great, up. Great physical tackle by O'Malley right there. He just broke, broke on the ball the second he saw it leave uh, Balantoni's hand. It's a great tackle by him. We talked about it earlier, Ryan O'Malley, sophomore. He's going to be here for years to come, definitely on the rise. Bellatoni, that put that completion put him over 200 yards. Bellatoni again looking down the middle. It's complete. And yeah, another one of those short passes just find the open pockets of space in this Darien defense. And they just they just have to keep on consistently be able to do that. Because they have to score here right now, Owen. So third and three. Big third down for the Falcons. Throws. It looks like he's got it. Ada again. Great job by Ramsey Otta, the wide receiver, also plays free safety. Another one of those short passes right there on the whip route to Otta. Great job there. Checking their play sheets. Now the Falcons, as they get a fresh set of downs, they have five more first downs than the Blue Wave in this game so far. Trips right. Bellatoni looking deep. Just passed. Trips right once again going back to that weak side one-on-one -on -one like they did before, which resulted in an interception. They're going back to it. Went a little bit overthrown. Got a lot of trust in it. Just overthrew Gerald Jacobs, Morgan Rupenstein in coverage. Lucas, we've seen him in, co in great coverage shutting down routes all game. He has been excellent so far today, just shutting down everyone, not allowing anything in the Ludlow passing game. Correction on the scoreboard, it should say 34-14 Darian is Bella Tony. He's gonna roll right again, wide open man. Gets down fast. Mahoney, great catch was able by to Charlie snag Mahoney that one right out of the air. There. See it again, lots of time in the backfield. There's now Another fresh set of downs. Mahoney using that big body 6'4 frame to get up there and make that high catch. Ooh, cool trickery play. Hey, 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 oh. Kleinbeck, he's going to. Oh, John Kleinbeck. Wow, and that is the first big run for this Fairfield Ludlow Falcons team. Kleinbeck taking it all the way, using a little bit of trickery to spring open the run game. Broke off yeah. Will Bremer's tackle, Morgan Rubenstein, and, and broke off Johnny Fay. Ludlow just over doubled their total run uh, rushing yards on that one play right there. 26 yard touchdown by Kleinbeck. It's a great run. Bellatoni took the snap, started running to his left and midway through just gave it to Kleinbeck is now Graziano will look to kick it. Yeah, no, if if this Ludlow defense can just get a quick stop here, they're right back in this game. So that mount now makes it a 13-point game. Less than 10 minutes to go, but like you said, Lucas, a couple stops, and Ludlow could easily come back in this one. Yeah, this Darien offense just has to focus on just getting those short gains, getting near that first down marker, extend, extend your drives. But... A, a fast three and out or a tono, turnover right here would really put momentum in Ludlow's favor. Defense has a quick chat with the with the uh, coaches. Special teams will head out onto the field. Miko Morano will kick it away. The lefty kicker. Yeah, interesting. Ludlow has two kickers. Obviously, Graziano and Unity just, commit. Yeah, Graziano seen on the uh, extra point attempts. And then we saw Morano on the field goal attempt. 
which went wide right. Kickoff from Murano. Rooney's got it. Looking to return on the far side. He'll just go down, take a knee right at the 20. Playing it real safe there, Rooney. Doesn't have to take the contact, doesn't have to take the risk of an unnecessary fumble. He just goes down at the 20. Yeah, smart football there from Darian. Yeah, I'm sure his coach has told him to do that too. Don't, don't risk anything, don't try and get too fancy. Just, just slide down if you got guys running at you. So Ben Rolap will lead the offense out. As again, we see Caesar back in the backfield. See a widespread of receivers though. Connor laying on the near side. Bonner lined up in the slot. Give to Caesar, taken down behind the line. Great play by that Ludlow defense, not giving them anything on first down. Yeah, great play. Getting behind that Darien offensive line, wrapping them up. No rush to snap this football. You just letting the play clock wind down. Yeah, center he Hayden Strebel standing straight up. Does not want to give this Ludlow team any more time. And now we will crouch down, put his hand on the ball, snap it with about six left. Again, give it to Caesar. Big hole. Luke Caesar down the middle of the field, cuts back. Still going down around midfield, tackled at the 35 yard line. How about that? That's a great play by Caesar. Great blocking by the Darien offensive line, just opening up a huge hole for him to run through. Look at and that. Weaves right between Ramsey Ada and a Pierce Jackson, Jackson frame. Yeah. Beautiful run. Playing conservative gets them all the way down to the 34 yard line of Fairfield Ludlow. Holy cow. Luke Caesar having a fantastic game so far. There goes Ben Rolab, just passed. Had a roach open on the outside, yeah. just missed him. A little too far. Ryan Torello was in the area for Ludlow. With that touchdown, Lucas, by John Kleinbeck, that breaks Darianne's streak so far this season. Of course, announcers curse with zero points allowed in that fourth frame. So, doesn't look to bother them too much though as they are marching down the field. Yeah, they are in a bit of no man's land here. Not sure if they're necessarily in Sakura's range if they're comfortable with him taking a kick from this far out. It'd be like a 50 yarder from here. Handoff to Tom. Tom getting physical there. Coming down for a couple, but. Now it's third and long here. Third down. And that Caesar run didn't necessarily get them in guaranteed field goal range. So they're gonna have to draw something up here to get to get at least five or six. Looks like Thomas Hergett is gonna jog off the field, be replaced by the captain Clifton Shelton. So Caesar after that will be off the field. Rollap will keep it, he'll throw. He's gonna go to the end zone, look for Bonner. He's caught, but he's shoved down of bounds. It was a fantastic catch by Bonner, but just caught it way out of bounds. Great effort by him, though. Yeah, great job to catch it in mid-air. They've had, they've had a ro lot of rolls, uh, rolls, rollouts to the left for Rollap. Going to his weak side, we know he's a right-handed quarterback. So, it's always gonna be a little bit awkward. You gotta flip your hips and throw it. But now it's fourth down and discussing if they're gonna go for it or not. Yeah, it seems like they will. On that last play, Braden Joyce of the Falcons was able to shove out Bonner. But now fourth and 10, like you said, Lucas, no man's land. Clifton Shelton in the backfield. Ludlow needs to stop here. Roll lap, 
Fake to Shelton. Stay in the pocket. He's he got run. time. He's going to run for it. He's got tons of room. Rollap cuts back. He's got Green ahead of him. Stiff arms and gets out of bounds. What a run by Ben Rollap. I mean, he saw nothing there at all. Completely covered and blanketed by this Ludlow defense. And he just takes off. And he had so much green grass ahead of him. Gets a great cutback lane and takes it all the way down to the seven. My goodness, went all the way from past that near side hash mark all the way to the other end. And Ben Rollup having himself a day. Three touchdowns, as we see here. Nine for 19, 130 yards. Caesar back in there. It's gonna be, Tom's gonna try to take the snap. It's high and he, and he drops it and it bounces, but he's able to retain possession. So interesting play call. High snap bounces right off of Tom's hands. Could have been the second time this game where a direct snap to Tom backfired, but. Tom gets wrapped up right at about the 16, yeah. 17 yard line. Climb back and Joyce. We're able to back, we're able to get so, back there. I mean, going back to that fourth down play, that is such a huge play for Darien. It's fourth down. Ludlow can get the ball back. Would be a huge momentum swing. But roll up. Roll up. Find the big run. Yeah, roll up now back in at quarterback. Bonner's gonna come on a little bit late. Let the play clock wind down. They snap it at the bot at the end of this. It'll be just above six minutes. He's gonna try to go to Connor Lane and he gets it. Has a man. Connor Lane dives in. Touchdown, Darian. It's a great job by Connor Lane to come back to the ball. Spin out and run into the end zone. Saw in the highlight reel before the game. Ben Rollap found Connor Lane in the McMahon game here at the high school. Earlier this year, on the 15th of September, just found him again. Looks like there's a Ludlow player down on the field. Yeah. The injury for Ludlow, it's the captain, oh. John Kleinbeck. That's not who you want to see go down right now. He's walking. He's, he looks like he's going to be okay. Maybe a little stinger there. But Always good. Connor Lane now, 89 yards on the season and adds another touchdown. Second on the team in receiving yards. Darian, definitely a run heavy offense. But it looks like that's gonna be taken off the board, that touchdown. Oh, it's gonna come all the way back. So no touchdown for Connor Lane. Yes, there's a holding or something that brought it back. They're way back here. It's second and goal. Rollop did have a lot of time in the pocket. Past the 20-yard line. As Rollop's going to throw again. He's looking for the man who just got into the end zone last time. He had number three, Will Bonner, on the near sideline open. Didn't see him. Tries to force it to Connelly. That's a great defensive play right there to swat it down. Looks like Ramsey Otta maybe got his hand on that. He leads the Falcons in fumble recoveries this year. So now... It's third and goal from the 22-yard line. So now that touchdown that, in effect, ended the game gets taken off. Now it's third and 22. Very interesting here. Shelton behind him. Fakes it to him. Tried to get it to Bonner. Just you gotta be inaccurate to, throw. Got to be able to hit on a play like that. It's an easy, it should be an easy completion, but just over the head of Bonner. Missed chance, now fourth down. But Ansys Accor and the kicking team are not coming out. Uh, maybe they might just want to try and get it as close to the goal line and give them, uh, give them a long field to drive down. But no, Ansys Accor, it's an interesting call. So fourth and goal. Guess. Even if he did hit the field goal, it would still be a two possession game anyway. I guess that's what Andy Grant is thinking right now. Fake to Shelton. Roll lap, steps up, rolls to his weak side, throws to the end zone, short. Looking for Will Bonner. Like you said, Lucas, always hard when you roll out to that weak side, have to flip the hips. Just not enough on it to get yeah. it to the end zone. Hard to get power on those throws. It's hard to really zip it 
but now Ludlow with the ball. If they can go down here and score quickly, they still have three timeouts, which would give them a great chance to get the ball back again after that. Let's see if head coach Mitch Ross is cooking anything up for the Falcons, as it's about just over five minutes left. As there is a pass Great play. deflected. Will Bremer again has an interception earlier and just gets in there with two hands, knocks it away. Great Jackson physical frame. play. So down 13, still very doable for Ludlow to get back in this game. After that start, look usually looking for some short yards on first down. You do have the 6'4", Charlie Mahoney, one-on-one -on -one with the sophomore cornerback down at the bottom here. See if you want to take a shot there. Not looking for him at all. Going to go the other way and lofted way out of bounds. Will Bremer in coverage again. Defenders coming at him. Tended for frame yet again. So testing Bremer. Pass was not accurate. It is now third and ten. Definitely not the situation you want. Carter Hagen will jog off as Gately comes on for Darianne. Huge play here for Ludlow. They need to get some yardage here. Not a lot of deep safety help, though. Ada in motion. Flip the defense. Bellatoni's got Mahoney. As he's going to fight his way. It appears to have gotten that first down. They'll move the chains. So great job, Lucas. Like you said, testing that uh, testing Ryan O'Malley on Charlie Mahoney. You see Mitch Ross there. He likes that matchup. 6-4 Mahoney versus 5-10 O'Malley. Bellatoni, again, lofts it incomplete. Otto was in the area, but just looking to get it as Brant Kaiser and I believe another Darien defender were in there. As so far, it just really looks like this Ludlow offensive line cannot handle the pressure of Gately, Kaiser, Barber. Just on this line, it's 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 stacked and it's extremely hard as Kaiser gets in there again. Bellatoni throws open man. It's complete his frame. Walker Brown wraps him up. Yeah, it looks like. Great job getting out of bounds. Frame on the corner route, got some nice separation as, as Brown got tripped up a little bit when he cut. Safety help was not there, and he was just wide open for that easy completion. Well, Loban dominating the pass game between these two squads so far in this affair. Bellatoni again, gives it to Kleinbeck, bobbles, secures it. Johnny Fay was right there, almost. A little Texas route almost by jarred it loose. Yeah, almost jarred it loose. Great job to keep it. So about a second and six here for Fairfield Ludlow. Maybe trips left. They might want to go to that one-on-one -on -one again with Mahoney. Throws it in just too high. Can't get it in. It's one of the plays you have to hit at this stage in the game. Can't have a mistake like that. The frame cannot corral it. No one really near him. Faye was behind him. They probably, Lucas, didn't go to that one-on-one -on -one as instead of O'Malley, it was Morgan Rupenstein who they've been seeing clamp down receivers all game. So especially frame-wise, Morgan Rubenstein, 5'11". Checking their play sheet is Ludlow. They go trips left again. Bellatoni looking for Mahoney. He's got him on the right sideline. Great catch by Mahoney. Thread the needle there on Rupenstein. They're right in front of Rupenstein. As he pushes him out of bounds. But now 3.50 left on the clock about. And they have to get in the end zone real quick if they want to have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they'll move the sticks. Fresh set of downs. Charlie Mahoney having a pretty decent game today. Bellatoni rolls to the weak side, hands it off. Gately, Gately got back there. 
and added himself. It's a great play by the sophomore, Gately. Getting that first initial contact in the backfield. Upset he didn't get the TFL, but still had a huge impact on that play. It's a great play by him. Ryan Gately, over a, one and a half sacks on the year. Second on the team. His timeout will be taken. So, Lucas, like you said, 13-point game. Field goal is not going to do it. Yeah, field goal is not going to do it. This is four-down territory right here. They have to go all out here, get some good play calls, and find some open pockets of space. These receivers really going to have to work this, these Darien DBs. And they might want to test a, a, a deep shot to Mahoney if they have a shorter cornerback on him as he can use that 6-4 frame to really go up and get it. But right now, Darian definitely does not want to give up the big play. Cannot afford a chunk play right now. Bellatoni rolls to his left, and you know, when their pressure was coming from Barber, it appears. Yeah, Bellatoni a little bit frustrated, as we can see. Again, just that, that O-line just not being able to handle the large uh, defensive line of the Blue Wave, just a relentless force from the second that ball is snapped. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they, they were back there within within a second, forcing uh, Bellatoni to roll out, throw that one away. Now third and 17. Klein back to his right. Bellatoni now. Throws, looking for Ada. Nothing there, Ada wanted to hold. There is a flag though on the offense. So an offensive penalty. Here's they will get Ludlow for a hold. I think I think Darian declined. Oh wait. No, they're right, so they're gonna back. move it back ten yards and replay that third down. Which it was an interesting choice because now they have two more shots for the big chunk play as opposed to just one before. Yeah, very interesting choice. I don't see why we, you know they're not gonna kick a field goal, so it's not like you're pushing them out of field goal range, but yeah, just, just maybe. Oh, we had the wheel rat on the far sideline open. Kleinbeck is able to break a tackle and get a couple of yards. But, yeah, that was gonna be around fourth and yeah, just about a, it's fourth and 20 about. Yeah, fourth and very long is really all you need to know is winding down clock, yeah, just about three minutes left. At this point, you just gotta let one of your receivers, your framer, Mahoney, get down deep. Rolls out, throws it up in the air, it's caught, but it's, his legs are taken out from underneath and pulling it out of bounds. It's a big hit, but it, that, that play was way too, in front of the sticks there. Yeah, incomplete, great job. Great job of Briggs McGuckin diving, That's sweeping a, the legs out, not allowing him to stay in bounds. That was a huge hit by McGuckins. And that was a interesting play call as he was still about five yards short of the first down even if he did come down with that. Great job by the captain, McGuckin. Bowdoin lacks commit. Great job of sweeping the legs out from underneath. Now, now Darian gets it back. Now we can look to see Darian just run this clock out. Expect to see a lot from uh, from Caesar. Just like you said, Caesar's going to get it. Oof! Gets Maybe. tackled awkwardly there. Yeah, bent backwards. He's making sure he can plan on that leg. He's he's good, but always scary when you. Land backwards on top of those legs like that. Ludlow gonna stop the clock. And uh, with 2.45 left to go, both teams will meet. Darianne, in the last four matchups, has gotten the better of Ludlow. If we go backwards for the last four, 2019, Darianne won 42-0. 2021 was the next time they played 
50 to 27. And 2022, last year, Darian did win 35 to 25. Yeah, we see a lot of high scoring games here. And this one also quite high scoring. Rollap will take it again, just give to Caesar. He's gained to nothing. Another timeout will be called by Fairfield Ludlow. Again, just to stop this clock. Yeah, it looks like they're just trying to use their timeouts now, get the ball back. And if they score on that drive, just hope for a onside kick. With such little time left, third and seven now. Ludlow not even staying in any huddle for long. Unlike Darianne, they just solely used the timeout to stop the clock. As Darianne will now come back on. So a close game in the first half. Darianne really running away with it in the in the second. This is going to be a short pitch to Tom. Fight his way forward. Tom on a shuffle pass up the middle. Ludlow now no more timeouts to use, so clock is going to wind down as Darian brings on Anson Sakura to punt it away. Sure they'll let the play clock tick away. No rush to snap this football. Darian's third punt so far in this game. Timeout taken by Darian to prevent delay a game. And they are running away with this one as there as it is sub two minutes left in this affair. So just a quick recap. First quarter, Ludlow started off the scoring. John Kleinbeck. Yeah, Ludlow put together a great drive on that first possession, just scoring in a minute and a half, and really had the momentum on their side. Yeah, something they haven't been able to replicate so far. But that was then followed by 17 unanswered points by Darianne going into the half, and they have just ran with it. Coral will give it the boot. Not before. Oh. So they're going to fake the punt. Wow. What a play call. They do a direct snap to their captain, Clifton Shelton. He looked like he wanted to throw, but then pulled it down and ran for it. Maybe he had a passing option, but that. That will ice the punt, game. Fake punt with a minute and a half left. Up by two scores. And now he's going to see Darian knee it out and take their win. What a play call by Andy Grant and this Blue Wave team. Holy cow. Clifton Shelton, haven't seen much of him today in that running back spot. It was mostly Caesar taking those, but... What do you know? Comes up and biggest moment of maybe the game is just looked like a normal punt, could have given it back. Who knows, maybe a prayer would be answered for the Falcons and they could onside kick like and one knee in this game. And he knees it and that'll do it. Darian beats the Falcons 34 to 21 the final. 
on the DAF Media Network. Like we just said, Ludlow, 7-0 early. They changed, Darian changed the course of the game, scoring 17 unanswered points. Great job today from Ben Rolap. Great job today from Ben Rolap and Justin Toothaker, our player to watch for Ludlow. Lucas, nowhere to be seen. Toothaker was a complete non-factor today. Not sure what was that about as he came off of a game where he scored the first three touchdowns against Ridgefield. Yeah, and then that, and that shootout, not so much as close in this one as Ludlow will, um, excuse me, Ludlow will move on to play Brian McMahon and Darianne is gonna move on and play uh, Wilton next week under the lights. So Ludlow falls to four and two on the year. Darianne moves up to five and one. I'd like to uh, give us this opportunity to thank everyone here at this Darianne, uh, this, this D at Darien High School Stadium field for today, uh, this representation of DAF Media. So thanks to this whole crew, Thomas Eber on camera, Leon Chen on camera, Trevor Kisto doing instant replay, Dalton Moss on graphics, Liam Tomaszewski directing, and of course uh, overseen by Damian Andrew, who's also on sideline cam today. And then for one last time, join alongside Lucas Balanzano, I'm Owen Heffron. You've been watching DAF Media Joint Venture with the Darien Athletic Foundation and the Darien Foundation. 34-21, your final. Have a great rest of your evening.